call to order the Jenkintown Borough Council public meeting for May 22nd, 2017. Um, and Mayor, would you lead us in the pledge? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
um, and we would look to have sort of an unveiling or finish that at some point, maybe for Veterans Day uh, this coming year, uh, maybe for Memorial Day next, and then do something in honor of uh, Ted when we do that. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions about the project? I have a question. Did, are you prioritizing and doing kind of a triage on the different monuments that you had assessed, or <coughs> what, why did you uh, select this monument? Change it down first because of Ted. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, there's one in Noble that Abington, that's in Abington Township that needs tens of thousands of dollars worth mm -hmm. of work. Mm -hmm. um, and then Abington's looking to move some of their monuments when they change the intersection at York and Susquehanna that's going to get moved down to the War Memorial Island. So we're working with them on how that <coughs> island is going to get redesigned mm -hmm. because the Noble Monument will also get moved when uh, the bridge gets done over the Noble train tracks and that goes to one lane each way for a couple of years. Um, so, yeah, this seemed to be easy. Ted was, Ted was interested in the project and, you know, he wanted to do that first go. Thank you for that explanation. Um, I was the one who actually asked if you would come because I, it felt like it was like a huge effort <coughs> to clean a stone, but I understand what you're saying. And then I brought, um, if you want, Natalie Karras, who is on our board, and she also is a conservator at Materials Conservation, if you had technical questions or anything else. <coughs> yeah, I'm happy to walk you through a little bit what our, what our plan is, if, if you want to hear some of the steps. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. So the granite really doesn't need very much done to it. Granite's a very durable stone, um, so it's not very dirty. Most of the work and the time and the money is going to go into the bronze plaque because the bronze plaque <clears throat> has not had um, a wax treatment applied to it in a long time, so there's been some corrosion. So if you look at it up close, you can see that there's some green corrosion showing up on the surface. <clears throat> so what we want to do is actually unscrew the plaque from the granite backing. We're going to take it to our conservation studio, and we're going to clean it, and we're going to re it and apply a new protective wax on it. And when that's done, it's going to have that deep, rich bronze color again, and that's going to protect it for many years to come. You probably won't have to do anything. A, a touch-up wax would be maybe in five years, um, and that would not be the same price. This is purely because this is the first time, it looks to me the first time the black has been <coughs> waxed. And hopefully our fund would be able to support okay. the ongoing things. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that. and. Um, I would imagine that we will go ahead and support the, the request. Um, and I think it's going to come up later on our order of business. <coughs> Madam President, if, if you like, you could just uh, make a motion to open the agenda and make a motion now and we'll go back in. So All right. Maybe. Uh, why don't we do that? There. Yeah. yeah. So public comment on yeah. <coughs> yeah. So I will move to. Um, <coughs> Say we go out of regular order and uh, move <coughs> that we approve the request from the um, <coughs> Old York Road Historical Society to restore the World War I monument that is out outside of Barrow Hall for not to exceed $1,000. <coughs> Do I hear a second? second. Any comment? Those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. And thank you both for coming thank out. You. So thank you so much. you about it. Yeah. You're welcome to stay. You're also welcome <laughs> to go. <laughs> I'll pick up the later. Okay. <laughs> thank you all. Thanks so much. <coughs> okay. Thank you very much. We'll now go back to the regular agenda and um, find out if there is any public comment or questions. Yes, would you state your name and address? Yes, it's Patricia Hart, and I'm 71 <coughs> Avenue. And today I downloaded the minutes from the uh, March meeting, which I attended. And um, standing and talking, uh, it's not an easy thing for many people. I'm, I'm one of them, so if I falter, or as I did before, give the wrong address, please understand. 
my tooth just fell out. Too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm going to continue. Take your time. Take your time. We, we the tooth will still be out, but if you down. don't mind the gesture that seems to <laughs> see. <laughs> and with that, I'll continue. Uh, I felt badly to reenact an adverb that I, I was reflected in the minutes as a negative person. Uh, I came to the last three meetings that I was able to attend with an agenda, and I, from the day one, made my agenda clear, and it was never that this board is doing nothing. As a matter of fact, twice I stood to say, you have such a myriad of activities, it's, it's a quite uh, enlightening to me, and I feel good that I don't have to do that. And I also feel good that I don't have to do the minutes, because I've done that many, many times. And it's no fun. Uh, it's a challenging job, to say the least. So I don't particularly fault the minute taker or the reviewers. I don't think it's even appropriate for me to ask who. But in, in the minutes, it, it stated that uh, I felt you were doing nothing. At the last meeting, I'm not a, I, I'm not a uh, uneducated person. I felt sincere rancor in this house with taxpayers uh, talking to their counsel and their solicitors. <coughs> and I got on my feet after an exchange with Mr. Kilkenny and Mrs. Downs. I'm not here as Mrs. Downs' archangel or Mr. Kenny's Satan. I'm simply here with what I actually believe. And I thought that the activities at 303 seemed to be going very slowly because I felt if any of you lived next to that situation, you would have found it intolerable. And then I began to be aware, because I attended a, a, a hearing at, McHugh, at Judge McHugh's, that there was incidents previous uh, to this, this gentleman and his antics in our township that had been handled. So I began to wonder if some of the hesitation was because of previous scars, and I don't pretend to know all of the things that you all have gone through that would make it so slow to act on his language and such. One of the things Mr. Kilkenny brought up as he called Mrs. Downs Miss three times sounded a little disingenuous to me. I'd correct a student for acting that way. So when I got on my feet, I said, I'm Miss, she's Mrs. And then I continued. I questioned whether or not <coughs> things were being taken care of because I have come to understand how many people, boroughs, are under Mr. Kilkenny's care. <coughs> and my whole heart question was, why is it taking so slow to come to the defense of a neighbor, neighbors who are obviously going through a terrible, terrible time? And in the course of that, I asked about the other address the address with the gentleman the month before. And the reason, again, that I asked about that is, he said he comes and comes as nothing is done. Did you all hear that, say that nothing was done, that he comes? Did you not feel the frustration that gentleman felt? Uh, I can't account for you because I'm not walking in your shoes. But I had a personal interaction with Mr. Kilkenny when he said something was done and defeated and it wasn't at all. He just didn't give it the time. And I had to pursue it for the next 10 years to get it done when it should have been done. Any of you want to hear that story with Mr. Kilkenny? I'll be glad to go through it with you. And with the gentleman who has since died, who was part of this board, you'll have to believe one or the other of us, because what do I have to lose or gain? Okay, when I asked Mr. Kilkenny what was happening with the other address, Perhaps you remember, he said, we're working on it. <coughs> a few moments later, I said, could you tell us anything? And with the same expression I'm getting now, he said, I'm working on it. Well, <coughs> that doesn't cut it. It wouldn't cut it in any office that I know of. This isn't Dilbert. I am grateful to you all for what you do. I'm embarrassed that my front tooth has fallen out. I am not embarrassed the way I am feeling about what is happening in this township at borough meetings with what doesn't seem to be an upfront and positive protagonist activity 
for residents in this neighborhood. Thank you for your listening. Thank you for your statement. <coughs> and um, I will just reiterate that um, Borough Council has talked with um, the manager and with the solicitor repeatedly. We have been working with uh, Mr. and Mrs. Downs um, over and over again. So we are aware of the situation on Runley. We are very um, sympathetic to what's happening. Uh, the situation is being monitored. We are taking as many actions as we possibly can. And uh, I apologize for the slowness of it. Um, and I also know that as we work through uh, what is legally possible to do, that sometimes that just takes more time than we would like. Um, could, could I add just one quick to yes, and you've been very gracious. I, I forgot to say that much time was spent at the last me at that March meeting with correcting between civil and criminal. I, I think we all know the difference between the two. My question to you would be, how did it get to have to be a criminal situation? Why wasn't it handled at a, a civil situation? Um, I'm not entirely sure what it is a civil situation. Question. In fact, we just <coughs> we just petitioned the judge. Mrs. Downs is well aware of it. Uh, she presented new uh, evidence to us in April. We we're putting it in front of the judge. In fact, I even contacted her and scheduled a prep time uh, to go over all that and present to the judge. So I'm a little confused by well, that. Yeah, okay. I, I thank you for answering that. Um, and good, good, I'm glad that, that stuff is happening. But at the last meeting, was there not uh, explaining that this was, that criminal doesn't fall under your venue? That is correct. Um, she filed a private criminal complaint, which is her right to do in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. For the I do not, her. as township solicitor, I do not do that. No, I handle I, civil I, matters. I do And, and that. the civil matter that I'm moving forward with, that the judge held open, is a civil matter for a possible <coughs> zoning violation. Mrs. Downs came forward, presented evidence to us. We're going to present the, to the judge. Uh, I just, and I would just uh, give yeah, one I, more question. I must be, I, I did think that, if the, <coughs> that the criminal thing wouldn't have been handled if more pressure may have been put on that gentleman. It would be nice to think that. that. Thank you. Um, I also, you referenced another address, and I'm not entirely sure. I think you were talking one about the one Street. Long, yeah. uh, my heart ached for that gentleman. And I just wanted to say that um, action is being taken on that <coughs> situation. That was a situation that had the, the borough has been working on for several years. And again, sometimes um, because of property ownership and the legal system, things don't go as quickly as we would like, um, but it's definitely an address that we are well aware of and that we stay on top of uh, regularly. Um, okay, yes. Morey Dorkin, 205 Runnymede Avenue. I just wanted to follow up with what Pat said in terms of the minutes of the discussion for the March meeting. Um, at the March meeting, um, Solicitor Kilkenny stated, as he stated, evening. He is a civil attorney. His office doesn't handle criminal complaints. Um, he said he does not advise the chief. He said uh, in a very aggressive and maybe even hostile way, I would say to uh, Mr. Nabor, you were informed wrong, sir, when Mr. Nabor brought up that his office had advised the chief. The minutes do not reflect that his office did advise the chief on a criminal matter and advised the chief to stand down, which the chief did. And the minutes do not reflect that. And the chief then apologized and said he was sorry that he had followed that advice. And that particular incident, which, turned, which rolled into the criminal complaint, is now, as Peggy said, or whoever, 62 counts, which likely involves jail time. And that's what our civil attorney advised us to stand down. So I just want to make that clear, because the minutes do not make that conversation clear. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> I think I can clear this, this whole okay. misunderstanding up, um, for a lot of people in the audience. The solicitor's office, the solicitor uh, Kilkenny's office, um, Natasha, I believe I spoke with Natasha, never, ever, ever advised me not to file to serve a conduct charge. She never advised me to do that. I will take the blame for not filing those charges, and I'll explain. Um, 
But let me just shoot back to something real quick. 62 counts of criminal violations were filed at district court by the Downs. Probably more than half have never been, we were never notified of the documentation that they filed with. So police were never even involved in that. The Downs had every right to file those criminal charges based on what they documented, what they saw, and the police were never ever called to document anything. <coughs> so we're totally out of that uh, realm. <coughs> this particular instance that they're talking about is there was a situation where the gentleman was up and down the driveway and he was using foul language and making gestures to, um, the, to whatever he was doing. So they, uh, the Downs filed a complaint. The officer went down. I was, it was on a weekend, I believe. Was it, Dave? Friday. Friday, it was a weekend. And um, I advised the officer, well, you know, where he said that if he does anything illegal, we're going to file disorderly conduct. That's the job of the police department. The solicitor's office never advises the police on criminal charges. If it's um, district attorney's office, correct? Yeah, we go to the district attorney's office. But in this particular case, I knew very well. I've been in this business 41 years, and I know when somebody's acting disorderly or not. So um, I was all about filing disorderly conduct charges against the gentleman. For his action. And I said to the officer, I want to send it down to the, to the judge as far as I'm concerned, he's disorderly. But I, I was also sent a video of the situation, and I knew that, this, that the solicitor's office had other videos, not related to criminal conduct, <coughs> but related to the business complaint about it. So I knew that uh, George was supplying videos when he felt it necessary. So I had a video that I thought would be helpful in this massive case folder that had nothing to do with the business, but I thought, well, I'm going to send that video anyway. That resulted in a conversation between uh, Natasha and myself via the telephone. And I suggest, I tell you, you know, we're filing charges, and it was her opinion, <coughs> it was her opinion that she didn't feel it was it reached the level of disorderly conduct based on it wasn't a face-to-face -face thing. The guy was doing all these gestures to the camera. I certainly disagree with her. With all due respect to Natasha, and she, I said that with all due respect to Natasha, I, I'm going to file the charges. She says, Chief, you do what you need to do. And I hung up, and I was finishing my coffee at my kitchen table, and I was thinking, I'm thinking, I don't want to complicate this issue any further than what it is. And so I recalled the officer, and I said, look, hold off on those charges, because I'm not sure if it rises to that level at this point. Because I do respect the solicitor's opinion. I do respect his associate's mm -hmm. opinion. Um, that was my fault, Madam President and Mayor. I told the officer not to file the charges. The solicitor's office never told me to do that. Um, so the charges were that one disorderly conduct was not charged. However, the police department has filed charges on that gentleman on several occasions because of disorderly conduct. Because that's what we do. I don't seek advice on when to charge somebody. I know when to charge somebody. I, and I apologize to the officer, and I apologize to the truth, because they, they say, hey, Chief, you said, whenever this guy acts up, we're to charge him. And now you're saying for us not to do it. So, I'm going to take the hit for that, Madam President. I, I told the officer not to do that, and, and as I told Natasha, right, face to face, when we were sitting right here, I should have never listened to that advice, and she respected my opinion, and I respect hers. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm gonna, I just want to say one thing, yeah. and I, um, I want to point out that <clears throat> our minutes are composed based on audio recording, and so um, all of the... Um, statements that are being made tonight can serve to correct uh, and clarify the minutes from March. So, yes. Yeah. Um, just one <coughs> follow-up on, on the Chief's statement. Um, I was made aware of the fact that you had this conversation with Natasha a couple of days after it happened. And um, 
I wasn't present at the conversation. I don't know what the tenor of it was, what either of you said. Um, but my direction to you, as, as you'll recall, was that if you if you are able to observe disorderly conduct happening, whether it's at 303 Running Mead, whether it's in the Foley's driveway, or whether it's in Town Square, you are to cite for that. And that was my direction to the chief. Like, that's how we're going to behave going forward. Yeah. And the chief was very amenable to that. Great. Thank you very much. Are there any other public comments? Um, <coughs> you and then Mr. Downs. Is your hand up or are you just... No, just kitchen. Okay. I'll be <laughs> Excellent. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, now, one, three, seven, running me down. Um, I, I don't want to dwell too much on these minutes, but my question is, um, you uh, went over the minutes uh, before our public comments. You say this is taped, so I, I hope this will be corrected. What, I, what, what was missing for me was that it was pointed out very clearly by me, but I think by somebody else too, that uh, what Mr. Kilkenny had said was not correct, that uh, they did advise on the criminal case too. But in the minutes, it looks like it was all, well, the one of you that nothing happened. Uh, I, will go back, I will go back and look at those minutes. I don't, I don't recall it. I have to confess that I don't recall those minutes. Okay. But I'll go back and take a look. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Is there any other co public comment? Yes. <coughs> Randy Darbin, 99 Runnymede Avenue. Um, I received last April a response to a right to know request that I um, had filed um, about 35 days before uh, from Rick Ware. And uh, what Rick said uh, was that um, he would be unable to comply with my request, and, but that if I had any questions or concerns that I could write to Natasha at the law offices of Sean Kilkenny. I did so three times. The third, uh, e the third mail or, uh, piece of mail letter arrived today, it should have anyway, by certified mail with return receipt, which I haven't received yet. So my question is, Am I going to get an answer to my to my letter? My understanding, Mr. Garvin, is we responded accordingly for the state Sunshine Law and Open Records Act. Your request was denied in the sense that uh, if you want to provide a third-party vendor to get the information you wanted to, which was part of the law, you could, and that you have an appeal to the Office of Open Records if you want to. That I understand, but in the letter that I sent to you, um, it became clear to me that you had information that you were withholding from me. That's not true. Uh, well, it is, because um, allow me to prove you wrong yet again, Sean. Um, <coughs> I was sent a quote from yeah. one of three vendors, and the quote would require me <coughs> to foot the bill. So I thought that it was within my rights to ask for the other two quotes, since, since I'm going to be the person to pay for this service, I should at least know what the other vendors are. That was one of my questions. I said, file your, you, you are free to file your appeal with the office. So, the as, an, so as someone who is in service to the borough, <coughs> you, feel as, you, you feel quite comfortable with completely ignoring a, a resident of this borough when he, file, when he sends you a letter asking you perfectly reasonable questions? S sir, if you are interested in that I know what my recourse is, but I'd that like to go through you. That's, well, that's your answer, sir. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Are there any other public comments or questions? Yes. I have a question. Oh. Uh, oh, <coughs> um, I have a question about uh, the SEPTA parking lot, but I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. SEPTA parking lot? The SEPTA parking lot? At the, the train, train station? station. Okay. Yeah. Um, they recently, maybe six months ago, they redid the uh, um, payment uh, uh, system. Right, the kiosk. The, or the lack of kiosk. Well, no, no, I mean, I mean for the parking. So right. uh, mm -hmm. you have yes. to put in four quarters, which I think is already very inconvenient nowadays. Yes. But, uh, but um, they placed it so far from the, the there's in front of the train station, you have the handicapped spots that's very close to the train. I think it's very convenient for handicapped people. But they will have to go pretty far <coughs> out, out of the way to uh, put their four quarters in. I think that's, that's kind of under. Uh, minds the, the purpose of the park. So, and it would have been possible, I think, because it was just a little case, to put um, a case for the uh, for the uh, 
handicap parking spots closer to the handicap parking spots. Uh, is that something that Burrow can, can Well, we would love to be able to affect that. <laughs> um, and we could certainly <coughs> Uh, communicate about it when we next talk to SEPTA. Okay. Um, there are other things about that pay station that I think are problematic as well. So I join you in your concern about that. Okay. Um, and also, we would, I'll just say publicly that we would like very much for SEPTA to um, have a reasonable plan for um, having some kind of business occupy that um, the station. So um, we have lots of reasons to want to talk with SEPTA, <coughs> and thank you very much for your comments. Yes? Um, I just had one other comment regarding Cedar Street. Um, from the minutes from... Oh, would you state your name again, just so we have... Dorkin, 205 right in the air. Um, from the minutes from the January 23rd meeting, Mayor Foley, and I believe sincerely, um, reassured residents that the process uh, for Cedar Street development is only in the beginning stages. The next step is to receive public input on what the public would like to do to see this property become. The property is all up to the community to develop. Um, and, and I believe that that was a sincere statement on his part. Um, but as I observe those who are leading this process, I have only seen meetings take place at EAC where there's Basically, what kind of park do you want? And the survey instrument that was set out, sent out basically said, what kind of park do you want? So I'd like to know what I am missing, since there's almost as many people who came to these meetings and signed the petition that are against the development of this property as a park, including, well, I'm not authorized to speak on behalf of others, but um, what, are, what are these steps that you're taking to evaluate non-park options and looking at selling it and other opportunities not the park. Um, okay, I'm just typing down these, these questions. Uh, I'll speak briefly to that, and then I'll ask if other people would like to comment. Um, when we were offered to uh, receive this <coughs> piece of property, and we were, we were asked if we wanted to buy this property at a discounted rate, uh, we had several conversations on council, uh, we discussed it in at least two public meetings, and many people around the table said, we think it would be appropriate to make it a park. The, um, the people who sold it to us sold it with that hope, and we reserved the right to investigate other, uh, other actions. Uh, at this point in time, um, the consensus around this table is that using it as park space and open space and green space would be the best thing for the community. We are still taking <coughs> steps to uh, investigate the costs of the steps that need to be taken in order to do that. Um, there are still questions about whether we will leave one building up or two, you know, a garage up. Um, all of those questions are being raised but are not answered at this time. We have not received any um, quotes about it, and we're still compiling the numbers so that we can make um, good judgment about that. We have heard citizens' comments who say that they think the property should be resold, and I think I'm speaking for people around the table who simply disagree with that point of view. And we thank the public for letting us know. We have heard from numerous people that they think having it be green space and park space is a good idea. So, and, um, and so we are listening to all of those different points of view, and we have our own point of view, and we are the people who are going to put this into, um, into operation. So at this point in time, yes, we had a very large uh, and well-attended EAC meeting where a lot of input was gathered. Um, we had a survey that was put out. It was part of somebody's um, master's um, coursework in landscape architecture, and so it was designed in a, in a particular way. Uh, and we did receive a few comments on that survey that said, I think you should sell the property. Um, we, just the other night, on Wednesday night, we had another EAC meeting at which um, people were invited to talk more about it. There was pretty well attended. I think there were about 25 people in attendance. And um, 
one, I think one or two people, maybe you can help me remember, um, spoke about how they still felt that they, um, that it was wrong to lose the tax revenue that was associated with this property. And I would say that the majority of the people who were in attendance continued to talk about their enthusiasm for having it be a park. Um, we think that we are making steps that are, um, it's a legacy decision. It's a decision that will affect generations and we do recognize that it will result in some um, loss of tax revenue and there will be associated costs. Um, would anyone else like to add? I'd like to say that, for, you know, when I was at the meeting, I've been at the meetings, more than, I would say probably half of people who come live on Theater Street, so they're directly impacted. The next meeting is June 21st, so if you'd like to speak with residents who are, who are going to be immediately affected or to engage with them, to hear what they have to say, please come out on the 21st. The EAC is running the meeting because they are kind of the, the group that's spearheading most things that have to do with um, the, the development of this, of this open space versus it being a borough-led, council-led initiative in terms of like the decision making. <coughs> so yeah, June 21st will be here. No, I, I don't have really anything to add, but no, you're right. And most of the reason why we did it with the, on the EAC nights is those were already established meeting nights. And so that's what kind of made sense that, that they were easy to tack on to that as well. I just want to add that out of, I think, like the 4,400 residents, I think there were 200 and change that responded to the survey. Um, the majority of them affirmatively in terms of the, um, the, what kind of part did they want. But there were almost as many people who came out in opposition to it. So I just want to... Not know, filling out the survey, though. I mean, you can go online and no, no, read the results of the survey. Okay. I mean, you really... It was, you know, that's right. No, but I mean, I do think that Al, we do want to hear everyone's voices, and so, if, you know, they should have completed the survey. I mean, if, that, if, that, if that's the feeling. <laughs> No, but in the negative, we did have, did have some negative responses, but it would say overwhelmingly it was, it was all very positive. And I'll just say, you know, all these public um, input sessions we've had, we want to hear everyone's input, and the vast majority of people who come out and express their opinion are in favor of this. So, and again, if you feel strongly otherwise, we'd encourage you to come and let us know. Um, all right. Yes. Randy Garman again, 99 Running Group. Um, to say that the people that came out to this are going to be the most impacted, I, I got to correct you. We are all impacted. No, 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 no. We are all impacted. People who live on the other side of town, who may never even go to that, we're impacted, okay? Because our school tax is likely to go up. Our property taxes, the borough tax, will probably go up. There will be a loss of tax revenue for the entire community. And when you position a survey that says, what kind of park do you want? You basically have rendered it a fait accompli. Who is going to show up for a meeting or take the survey and expose themselves as someone who's a ne'er-do-well? When you've already made up your mind, you've said so as much yourself tonight. It's not a done deal. I would like to see a survey go out that says, we have a piece of property at Cedar Street. What would you like us to do with it? And one of the choices being sell it. Another one being make a park. Another one build a new borough hall. I don't know. But don't make it sound like a fait accompli. It's disingenuous for you to sit there and say, the public had its say, because it didn't, and you know it. I would like, I would like to comment on your uh, comment. Um, <clears throat> we are not saying that the public is being invited to give input on whether or not we will keep or sell the property at this point in time. We have made the decision to buy the property, and when we made that decision, the consensus around this table was that it would be best to be used as green space. So thank you. Um, and I, I understand that's basically... You just proved my point. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yes. Um, I just want to say, as, speaking as chair of admin and finance, mm -hmm. that the tax revenue we're talking about is, real quickly figure out, it was 1 16th of 1%. Yeah, I don't remember that. It's absolutely negligible. There's no... For what? The purchase? 
But the, no, for the loss of tax revenue. For okay, well, what about the, the construction cost and okay, loss of I'm tax revenue? Talking for about the years. loss of tax revenue, which is what the point was, and it's one sixteenth of one percent. It's immaterial. There's no way it's going to lead to an increase in taxation. Secondly, the voice of people has been heard when we were elected, and we've listened and are continuing to have an ongoing dialogue with everybody to find out what we should do with this. The question of selling it, I think, is pretty much closed, but should it be a playground, should it be Obviously. A, a skating tube, should it be community garden, all those things are open. Thank you. Yes, we'll see. A couple more comments. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> um, so, I spend a lot of time on the playground because my kids are in elementary, and the, the feedback that I get on the soft side is that the people who have children in elementary are very much for them because they want another place for their kids to go. Um, they also have a big concern about if we build nine units there, three kids in each unit, what kind of stress is that going to put on the school? So these might not be the people who are, who are answering your survey or showing up at meetings because their children are in kindergarten, first, second, third grade, where they have to be home with them. But that's the kind of soft feedback that I'm getting every day on the front mm -hmm. Just so you know, it's just what I'm getting. One more comment. Yes, your question. The last one. Okay. Uh, date down, 303. I just want to let everybody know the people that are here, or 301, I'm sorry. But I just want to say thanks for the people that are coming to support us and other people that are on Facebook to help us support us. But as I told you last month, the business is still going on every day. It's going on. I know, Sean, we have a meeting coming up this week, so he's right about that with George. It's still going on. People don't know. that These people probably don't even know what's going on. We are affected. We're right by it. Five o'clock in the morning, there's stuff going in and out. Noise. Talk, their neighbor called us at nine in the morning and says, uh, what's going on over there? 5.30 in the morning, something's going on all that noise. Well, call the police. I mean, so they don't, I don't understand. We, we're there and we're being affected with it. I just want to let people know it's still going on. It's a no-impact residential area. No business out of there. I don't care if it's a concrete bucket or anything. It shouldn't be there. Signs on the truck, noise going in and out. So I just want to let people know that that's what's going on. Thank you. Uh, Madam President, I just want to reiterate and thank you, uh, Dave. Um, just so the public understands, we, after we heard from the Downs on April, I wrote a letter to Judge McHugh and requested a new hearing. At the time, you will be able to present this evidence to her. Mm -hmm. And she will be able to make a determination if a business is being operated or not. Right. And more than that, I'm working with you. Right, that's why I'm here for that case. So I just want to be clear we're not ignoring it. Oh, I know. That's why I said you're working with me. Okay. We have a meeting with you on Friday. Yeah, okay. But I just wanted to let the people know that nobody knows. I mean, I don't know if everybody knows. I mean, that's why I'm putting it out there. Maybe some of you guys don't know. You don't get the emails and everybody that we sent out. So I want to let everybody know from the town that the business is still going on. We still have an issue. That's all I'm asking. I said we're working with Sean on Friday and Thank George. You. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, Chief, have you received any complaints about 5 a.m. noise? We have not. Okay. It would be good if there is 5 a.m. noise for the police to report and, and document that. I told her that. Okay. I told the neighbor. Oh, you told the neighbor. Okay. Three doors up or four doors up. I told the neighbor to do it. But all right. I appreciate all of you coming course. out and um, making these comments very, very much. Um, <coughs> yes. I just ask them to go quick to okay. that. We'll investigate a founded complaint. Okay. So if somebody goes out to start the car to go to work in the morning at 5.30, we'll have to take each case individually. Yes. Thank you. All right, we're now closing public comment and moving on to committee reports. <clears throat> Admin and Finance, Vice President Blanker. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, there's a report in Dropbox. Mostly through the team, there are two items on the order of business, which are policy clarifications. We're just creating more formal policies um, around contractor contracts and capitalization. Reporting to the state, and there was discussion of uh, clearjobs.com. It's a company that we've hired to help um, 
put all of the borough financials going back, what are we going back, five years or? Uh, ultimately to 2004. Okay, so ultimately 13 years back. Um, structured in a way that uh, people can search for different things or compare it across the years, and slice and dice. And uh, hmm. it's pretty exciting to see the insights that can be gained by going through, of course, here's me, the admin and finance guy saying that the uh, financials are exciting, but <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool to be able to really find your way through all of the, the borough's finances and figure what's happened over the years, etc. So um, we're probably a couple months away from uh, all the data being loaded and organized and um, formally released. A month or so, right? A month? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we might be using closer. Um, I look forward to it. It's really pretty exciting. Great. Thank you. Any questions or comments? <coughs> All right. Building, zoning, and revitalization. <laughs> I report, thank you, um, is in your Dropbox. I'll highlight a few things. Um, as we discussed last month in RFI, um, for proposals for um, development, potential development of um, borough properties um, was advertised and distributed on the 16th, I believe, um, to developers. So um, we look forward to furthering that process and, and um, hearing back from developers. Um, additionally, there is a zoning hearing board um, hearing this Thursday um, regarding uh, Faulkner and Nissan's um, application for variance to store cars at 610 Old York Road. Um, council has opposed that and um, will be represented on the 25th by um, Solicitor Ken Penny's um, firm. Um, Great news is that we did receive the 2040 county, the county 2040 implementation grant um, in the amount of $73,000 to develop the Southern Gateway. Um, so that was a, a great vision um, that um, uh, Manager Locke, along with our county planners and um, our engineer um, Cal worked on in short order, and um, we're very happy with the design and looking forward to implementing, implementing that grant. And then lastly, we have one item on uh, the agenda regarding the creation of um, a use and occupancy inspection for residential resource. <coughs> Any questions or comments? Karen, what's the deadline for the RFI? Do you know? Anybody know? I will. It's on the website. Wait a okay. second. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Now you look at it on the website. I think it's right after Labor Day. Okay. All right? I'm not sure. I believe That's so. Right. Yeah, I'm July probably. 11th. Thank you. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. I thought we were going, we had decided we were going to open them. Yeah. Right after Labor Day. Labor Day. Yeah. 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 Okay. I recommend to do a 60 day through. 60 day, okay. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? All right. Um, building uh, public safety. Yes, um, the uh, Brendan, um, the uh, minutes from the meeting are in your Dropbox. We have one item on the agenda for part-time fire marshal and one item for executive session. Any questions or comments about public safety? Okay. And public works. Uh, thank you, Madam President. The minutes uh, from the meeting are in Dropbox. Um, real quick. Um, as far as paving goes, um, PICO is making its way up Rodman. Um, it's pretty much on schedule to be completed um, in the early spring, so our paving project um, is on target um, for late August, early September. I do have one item uh, on the agenda in reference to the 2016 <coughs> CDBG grant. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions or comments? I have a question. About public uh, works? Yeah. Okay. The downstairs three runway, uh, our 301 runway. Um, I just want to say I'm making an exception. We don't usually take comments on oh. this portion, but if it's a quick question. Yeah. Okay. What, uh, is there any other streets on the borough that are on the hit list for being paved beside uh, Rodman? Linda Vista. Hillside, 400 block? <clears throat> what, are, are they going to repair that? Yeah. Oh. Manager Locke, could you speak to that? Because we had that question come up. The main you. has been installed. They have to come back and install the services. And 400 block was recently paved, so 
FEMA will have to repay the road when they're done. What about some of the concrete work that, that, that people had on uh, Hillside that need to be done, the curbs and stuff? I noticed a few houses on Hillside, 400 block, that curbs are I, falling apart. I may have misspoke. Is 400 the block we haven't paved yet there? I don't, I, I'm not we sure. Not. It's not. between Wall and Elm. Then that would, we would plan to put that on the following year's oh, okay. project. Okay. I, um, okay. On that portion, Pico will pay for half of the pavement. Okay. If it hasn't been paved. <coughs> okay. I was just curious. That road is miserable. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, we're going to move now to the school district. Councilor McLean. Thank you, Madam President. Um, the manager and I, George, have been meeting with uh, Dr. Hawkins every month prior to public safety meetings to try to um, just be clear with the school district about where rural activity affects or impacts the school district. Um, and we're going to continue to have those meetings every month moving forward to preview that, that agenda meeting. One of the things that came up is she'd like to make a request on behalf of the school district that the borough and all of the rec board groups um, fill out a facility use form, at, preferably within a month of events, so that she can, they can coordinate usage. Um, she has no intention of denying anything, but an example might be like the use of pesticides on fields, um, or you know, those kinds of things. She wants to kind of clean up the logistics so that we can just be a better coordination effort. So I will continue to report out anything comes up in those meetings, mostly in public safety, because that's where they mostly will have a direct impact. So we need to get that word out to the rec board. Yes. Yeah, they have no more events planned for school property this year. Okay. Um, Easter. The Easter. Yeah, the major. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a concern about the Easter event. All right. Thank you very much. Um, Jenkintown Community Community Alliance Councilor Farrell. Um, the JCA met at the beginning of the month, and then again actually last week uh, to. Um, welcome any new members who would like to uh, contribute to JCA, um, either with regards to overall activities or specifically uh, as it relates to the Arts Fest. Um, unfortunately, no one came to the welcome new members meeting. Um, so uh, we will continue to um, talk to people who we think might be interested in, um, in volunteering. We're still looking for a lot of help for the Arts Fest. Um, uh, just a couple updates. Um, Chamonix um, Brewing has um, stepped up to handle the single serve um, beer works that day, um, and that's great to have uh, have them on board. And um, the musical lineups is are, are getting um, worked out, and a number of vendors have already signed up to, to come back. So um, many people are looking forward to it. But again. Um, if anyone in the community is interested in um, volunteering, you know, leading up to it, or a day of, um, in fact, we need a volunteer coordinator day of, so if you want to help with that, let us know. We'll uh, be happy to put you to work. We did receive a lot of positive um, feedback from people saying, we love the Arts Fest, we want to make it, you know, we want to make sure it continues. Um, we just kind of need folks to follow up. <laughs> Come to the meeting to talk about that. So. What is the date? Of the Arts Fest? schedule has been put out and um, 
that is required by the MS4 program. But, um, we sent our we sent a CDL driver to training for three days, and he came back and he has a good understanding of it. It's all maintenance. It's 100 percent now. And, uh, <coughs> I could answer any other questions that you might have for Public Works, but everything is high level. Is the street sweep sweeping schedule on the website? I don't. I don't know that. Don't know. It could. Um, I would like it to be. So we could just check that. I'll send an email to you. Okay. <coughs> All right. Thank you. I'll just follow up real quick. It's September seventeenth. One to six. Okay. All right. Um, engineering report. Uh, thank Mr. you, Mr. Hassan. A <coughs> uh, copy of my report was in your packet. A uh, couple of things I wanted to highlight. Uh, however, one is already on Google of Business, which is a 2016 CPD uh, advertisement. Uh, the second item is the Small Water Grant. Uh, uh, just a comment, actually, we're just looking forward to, to receiving further direction from the borough on how to move forward with the preparation of the good documents uh, for this project. Uh, this is the area that we had identified uh, based on the grant that we received by the borough. And uh, we just uh, will move forward once we receive additional direction, if you will. Are you referring to the match? To this is actually much <coughs> correct. It's it's the match, and it's also the the area that we had identified as this is what we foresee an area that will fall within 150,000, 160,000, and to move forward with that area, whether it is. Uh, complete lining, the lining of the system, or spot repairs. Okay, well, we were directed to utilize the entire budget and match at the A&F community meeting, and it was my understanding that Paul was going to go back to the videos and evaluate the east side of town, which is where most of the work's going to take place, and see if, just double check that it all needed to be lined where he was looking at. And then with the additional amount of, um, of match, we're going to see how much we could do in the same drainage basin, in the basin. Okay. Thank you. So just so I'm clear, the small water grant of $150,000 is um, slated to go toward sanitary sewer repair. Is that right? Correct. Yeah, the, okay. whole, the whole purpose out of the grant was to obtain Great. funding uh, to help or aid in the process of paying for the rehab of the sources. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And I'll, I'll get the information to you first. Okay. Anybody have any more questions? All right. Thank you very much. Uh, solicitor's report. I yeah. have uh, nothing to report other than what's been covered previously in public comment. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, Mr. Mayor, do you have anything? Um, I have no report other than a uh, matter for executive session afterwards. Okay. Um, <coughs> Uh, Chief D. Valentino. Thank you, Madam President. Um, my reports are in your Dropbox. I'll be glad to answer any questions if you have any questions for me tonight. <coughs> and but I also want to mention that I feel very uh, honored to be invited to uh, speak at Call of Me Synagogue on June 27th about immigration and police <coughs> policies on. Uh, the immig immigration situation in the United States. Uh, <coughs> I'm going to do that now. I feel very privileged to do that. Great. And uh, that's all I have now, President. Good. What was the date of that again? It is um, Tuesday, June 27th from 7 to 9. And I noticed in your um, report there was a letter from um, Kevin Steele, the district attorney, uh, the county district attorney, <coughs> congratulating um, Detective Mark Welsh for his exceptional work and uh, presentation. So congratulations. Thank you. We went to an award ceremony at the Fire Academy last week, and he was presenting a few awards at that time. That's great. And uh, we're very proud of that. Very good. Any questions? Manager Luck. Manager, uh, I know you have a report. My report is in Dropbox. Uh, a couple things I'd like to highlight. <coughs> Some
some of them might have been hit. I'm trying to decide which ones uh, were. But I think that we should definitely talk about the grants. Uh, one Cal had brought up about the $150,000 small water grant that we received and the implementation grant that Council Farrell mentioned. We've also received the 2017 Greenlight Go grant. Uh, that is the same granting authority as PennDOT that uh, provided the grant for the school safety lights. It's the same program, we're very familiar with it. We were awarded $89,000 in the 17th session, and that's to upgrade our eight uh, traffic lights. Right now, um, if the lights go out because of a storm or for any reason, Public Works has to get called in, they have to come to the shop, they have to get a generator, they have to report the intersection, hook it start, plug it in, and get the lights back on. In the meantime, the offices are out there on 611 directing traffic, and sometimes it's the worst of weather conditions. Uh, this grant will make them all battery back up, so they'll immediately come back on if we lose power. It also provides three small uh, state-of-the-art um, I'm sorry. Generators uh, that could easily take on the light. With these LEDs, they're very touchy. The old style generators, they kick off and on. Um, these are made by Honda. They're very small and they, they've had great luck with them. PennDOT has. They will also uh, upgrade to all LED lights in the lights for this. Um, it used to be a 50% match. This, uh, two years ago, they lowered it to 15%. And yeah, they seem great. to be giving out more money with it. So uh, that was a great thing that, that came through. That was written by Pannoni. Um, we really do the right thing with job on the grants. Let me just take a moment to say thank you very much um, for working with Pannoni to put those things together. And thank you, Cal, <coughs> for working on that. It's great to bring those funds to the borough for public improvements. Thank you. Pleasure. Yeah, the public safety, you know, um, public safety improvement, but it's also a cost savings because, yep. you know, we were paying quite a bit for overtime yes. um, for our staff to be out there um, in the inclement weather. And, um, we will be putting this 2016 CMBs grant out to bid, and I believe that is on your agenda tonight. Uh, we had a pre-construction meeting for the 2017 paving project, and that opens this week, Cal? Yes. Mm -hmm. That opens this week. Uh, two bidders came to the pre-bid meeting. It's not unusual to not have a lot of people come to that meeting, because it's, mm -hmm. it's offered on 10 bid, and you can enter any questions you want. And it's a good process, because that way you can answer it online, so all the bidders get the answers. And it's a very clear process. So uh, the, the people who did it last year came to the pre-bid meeting this year. They're interested in doing it. Okay. And just to reiterate, the CDBG grant will be used for um, ADA accessible ramps. That is correct. Sidewalks. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Did you? Is that it? That's all I have. All right. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the order of business. Um, Councillor Farrell, will you take us the first item? Sure, I'll make the motion and then um, I can explain a little bit about the, um, the ordinance after that. Uh, I make a motion to adopt ordinance number 2017-5 pertaining to the creation of a use and occupancy inspection for residential resales. We hear a second. Second. Um, and the creation of this ordinance um, will require um, notarized affidavits of um, smoke detectors, um, curb and sidewalk inspections, four interflective house numbers, and videotaping of sewer laterals from the house to the main. And all these things are in an effort to um, improve public safety and um, uh, lessen environmental impact of damaged um, sewer laterals. Any questions, comments? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. The record show unanimous vote. Vice President Bunker, you have the next two items. Thank you, Madam President. I make a motion to approve the borough capitalization policy. Continue drop box. Um, 
really simply says if the borough buys things that cost more than $5,000 and are expected to last more than a year, that they're reported in the forms that we file with the state as capital acquisitions, right? Is there any? Well, that's good. Exactly that's, what it so it's, a, it's just to clarify policy. Do I hear a second? Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. The professional services contract policy. Um, I make a motion to approve the professional services contract policy. This again is policy that we already follow, which just says, um, I think it's if it's above $2,500, we get three quotes and above an amount set by the state borough code, which I believe right now is $18,000, things actually go out to bid. Um, and it just formalizes that uh, we're going to use that. Again, did I get it right? The clarification I would make is that um, this is for uh, pension work. Oh, or that's right. Uh, sorry. So the reason we need to work uh, on any of our pension programs. That's right. So, so the, the reason we need the formal policy is so the auditors, when they audit the pension, uh, see that there's a specific policy that says when we hire the actuaries to determine pension liabilities of the auditors or the advisors to determine pension investments that we use this process. So. Okay. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. Uh, questions? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Right. <coughs> Councilor Connors. I make a motion to advertise the bid specifications for the 2016 CDBG grant. This just goes back to what Cal spoke of a minute ago. Um, that the 2016 grant, um, the contract has been ex executed, the survey has been completed, um, and the design of the ramps has begun. And now this needs to be out for our um, Do I hear a second? Second. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any questions? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Um, Councilor Whitney. Hire the report time fire marshal. Um, make a motion to hire Kevin Lynch as a plural part time fire marshal. This is after uh, an ex a search. We had four finalists, and we chose Mr. Lynch. Um, a group of people to interview him, and I think he is the best candidate, so I appreciate your support. Second. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. And Councilor Luger. I make a motion to adopt resolution 2017-6. Mary Mulderig, 
as a new member of the um, HRC, our local HRC. Uh, so that is my motion. I move to appoint Mary Mulder to the HRC of Jay Mattel. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody, any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. um, several people around the table got to meet Mary. No, I was very impressed with her. Yeah. Thank you for finding her and yeah. recruiting her. Yeah, I think she'll do a great job. And she has um, already agreed to kind of look into what kind of training the group could get. So um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you very much. Um, one other new item that has come to our attention is about this, the, we had proposed a tree be purchased for Town Square. And um, in the process of uh, thinking about that and doing a little investigation, it seems to us that we should take it back to committee because we realize that there are a number of problems involved in putting a tree in the planter in the center of town square. One is that the planter can't really hold, we're, we're concerned that the planter might not be large enough to hold the tree. Um, and the second thing is that we realize the, that it would make an obstruction in the middle of our town square, um, and which is okay during the winter you know, holiday time. Uh, but I don't think we want it there 24-7 all the time because of all the events that we have there. Um, so it's not really a motion, but I would just like to send this item back to the committee for more discussion about the issue of having a tree at holiday time. That's it for that one. Um, and then we wanted to make a statement about um, ice cream vendors in the borough. So I'm not sure that I have all the details of this, so I'm going to rely on our solicitor and the manager to help me sort it all through. Um, in fact, so, so many of people have noticed that there has been ice cream, at least one ice cream truck that's driving around the borough. And at the moment, we have an ordinance that <coughs> prohibits the sale of any uh, goods um, on the sidewalk or on the streets. So that ordinance, we have been advised by our solicitor to have that ordinance stand. And if occasionally we as council wish to waive that ordinance for a special event or a particular period of time or to put some conditions on a waiver, then whoever is asking for that waiver needs to come and make a proposal, a written proposal to council. So at the moment, we have no such proposal from any vendors. So um, we are authorizing the police to please stop all of the ice cream sales that are around the, the borough unless those vendors come to us with asking for a waiver. Just the, would that affect the farmer's market? Do they need to come and request a waiver? The farmer's market is a good example of when we waive that. It's already been done by agreement. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. So I don't know who's been watching Facebook. And the Arts Fest, too. And the Arts Fest is an exception. Yeah. Yes. I would just like to suggest that to Chief, rather than shutting them down, that we put together a one-pager and let them know, uh, just to be friendly about it. Mm -hmm. I think that we would all like ice cream vendors to be here in a law-abiding, non and open <laughs> way. Um, and maybe a, a piece of paper that explains what they need to do and the rules that they need to follow might be helpful. And then once having given that to those folks, um, if they still decline to, to come full permit, then there's a good shutdown at that point. And I would like to say specifically that Dr. Takas and the school district do not want an ice cream truck <coughs> on school property yeah. between 2.30 and 3.30. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So that is that is a major, <coughs> they are not comfortable with that. And or at all, I would say. Right, she specified yeah. like with like establishing a window, right. she's not, you know, not understanding there's a larger ordinance that it's yeah. a violation of. You don't mean school property, they're not on school property. They have right. been on Highland, they well, came, yeah. came up Highland mm -hmm. and parked in that little area, that little turnaround in the back. Well, that's not school property. Yeah, it's totally true. Yeah, well. Yeah, that's why I asked. Right. I well, the school district is not welcome there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, an, that's another layering. That seems like yeah, something reasonable. Yeah. And there's a, there have been, uh, I don't there's been a Facebook post about that. Yeah. 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 Has, has either of those guys, because I know there's two, there's Mr. Softy and there's Mr. Bunny or whatever. Okay. 
Um, have any of those guys been responsive to complaints about the decibel level? Yes. Uh, in, I only know what. They yes, they have. If you talk to them, they will turn if it down. If you request, they will turn it down. Okay, so it's doable. It is doable. Mm -hmm. If children don't have money, they are giving. They will. One kid doesn't have money, the other does. They will actually give the other kid a nice I mean, that's, they're very, very kind. We've had. I've been here ten years. We've had an ice cream truck every single summer. And we've never had this Facebook explosion yeah, of people yeah. complain. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for your suggestion. I like the idea of having a one pager that would art outline. Um, that way they know to go after yeah. you. Okay. Thank you very much. I know we're not allowed. Can I ask a question? Can you know, to that topic. Yeah. Okay. Can you tell me when that order went when in effect? What that? What year? Because I've been here 55 years, and we've had ice cream trucks all over the place, and we've never had a problem. I'm just curious when that came into effect. Yeah, what I year that was? Did look, but I can't remember. I don't, I don't. Was yeah. that something? That information. Was no. that? Was that something new, or is it something that's oh, been around for no, 50 years? Just, just complaints are new. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, I didn't know that. Okay, thank yeah. you. <laughs> no, it's it's not new at all. Okay. This was never enforced then. All right, um, so those were my three new business items. Anyone else have any new business? I, I yes. Do. I had a, um, a resident um, email me and some other people, and it, it's in reference to something that Ed has brought up before in the past about um, Highland Avenue, that there's a Highland Avenue in Jenkintown, and that SPS is also mm -hmm. on Highland, and mm -hmm. it's directing huge trucks into our neighborhoods. Oh, um, wow. And so they have to turn around and back out, and they're, they're down to the curb. And yeah, and yeah. getting hung up on wires. And, and yeah. we kind of had a, two or three of us, including the resident, had a, we went back and forth with emails about resolving it. Um, I think Ed alluded to the fact that it would take three years to get Google to uh, change their, their maps. Yeah. So, uh, um, you know, I, I didn't. I really don't have an answer or a solution at the moment. Mm -hmm. I told the resident that I would email Steve McCarter's office to see if they had a contact or a name or okay. any experience with anything like that. But Great. Yeah. One thing I've seen on, um, I think it's on Barron Hill Road coming from Conshohocken up to Ridge. They've got a big sign saying trucks. The newspaper office isn't here. Because I guess they have the same problem. Yeah. The yeah. structure going down River Road mm -hmm. on the wrong side looking for the newspaper. Maybe we could put a sign up like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So SPS is that way, not down here. Could I ask that um, this be brought to public safety for some problem solving? Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you for bringing that to you. Who would have thought? Was there somebody else in that movie? All right, we need to adjourn we need to, out of this session and go into executive session. We will go back into, exec, or into regular session at the end of executive session, and we have to discuss a personnel matter. <laughs>